Hello. Here I'll talk about um, examples of the construction of splitting algebra and splitting field. Um, so the examples will be for polynomials of small degree, degree 2 and degree 3. Splitting algebras and splitting fields of degree 2 and 3. The degree 2 is really a quick and short story, so if we start with an irreducible polynomial or some field K then the splitting algebra let me write it explicitly because it is really um, a small presentation. So I have two roots to attach to my scalars called x1, x2, and then the condition that the roots of the given polynomial um, fulfilled by these relations which I impose on my algebra. So the product is the free coefficient and the sum is uh, minus the linear coefficient. And then, yeah, it's easy to see that um, any of the roots is a root of this polynomial, so satisfy this quadratic equation, and it generates this algebra. So we can um, say see it as a linear, as a vector space over k spanned by one and one, the first one x one, and it is, as I said, x one is a root, so it is isomorphic to this quotient by our irreducible polynomial. So it is a field. Uh, the splitting algebra is a splitting field, so I'll, I'll call in what follows uh, my splitting field F. And the splitting field can be um, explicitly written as a result of attaching to the scalars the square root of the discriminant. The discriminant for this quadratic polynomial will be just um, 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 just the um, x1 minus x2, the difference of the root squared. And it is, of course, a combination of the coefficients of the polynomial. We can write it as x1 plus x2 squared, but we have to subtract four copies of x1 and x2. And that is, in terms of the coefficient, this is negative b, but all square will be just b squared. And then this is uh, four copies of c. So that is the discriminant, and we have, of course, x1 minus x2 inside our splitting algebra, and that is uh, our square root of the discriminant. So, yeah, as promised, the story of quadratics is really short if we start with an inducible polynomial. The splitting algebra is just a field, it is a splitting field, and it can be written as the result of attaching to the scalars um, the square root of the discriminant. So let's now look at the degree 3. Um, yes, we have a polynomial, we can make it monix, it starts with t cubed and then say coefficient b for t squared, c for t, and t for the free term. And okay, let's assume that it is an irreducible polynomial over our chosen field k. Then what can we expect for the splitting algebra of f. Well, um, we know that uh, it is a sum, direct sum, of copies of the splitting field. And then it's just the number of copies which really um, determines two different cases. So it could be um, just one field, so that would be saying that the splitting algebra is a field, and that would correspond to the uh, Galois group to the symmetry group to be the complete uh, symmetry group S3. Or we could have a subgroup of S3 and the subgroup should be um, uh, should be such that the order is divisible by 3. So there is only one such proper subgroup. It is the group of even permutations. And in this case um, the um, 
order of this group, which is 3, is the degree of the splitting field, and we have to have two copies in the verder bern decomposition for our splitting algebra. So this is dichotomy in sort of in, in, in the language of uh, of algebras of ring theory uh, for our splitting algebra. It's either this or this. It's a sum of two fields or it's just one field. And that is reflected in the symmetry group, in the Galois group of the splitting field F. So let's see how can we distinguish between these two cases by just looking at the polynomial. And the uh, again, the key uh, instrument in, in, in this will be the discriminant. So the discriminant for the degree 3 now is uh, well, as before, is the differences of roots uh, taking the product of and squared. And as before, and as always, it can be written as a combination of coefficients. And this time the combination, this presentation is quite uh, complicated. So it is this coefficient squared times this coefficient squared and without four copies of c cubed without four copies of b cubed d negative 27 copies of d squared and then 18 copies of b c and d together so that is if we want to compute it by just looking at the polynomial but um, how can it be used in distinguishing between the two, these two cases so let's look at what happens, say, if we have this special case. Let's just characterize this special case and everything else will be um, in the first situation. So let's assume that we have this group of symmetries um, being a 3. So the, um, the splitting field uh, has the group of symmetries being a 3. Uh, it is a cyclic group, right, um, generated by a 3 cycle. Let's call it tau. So tau could be, just explicitly, could be the cycle 1, 2, 3. That uh, means that x goes, x1 goes into x2, x2 goes into x3, and x3 goes back into x1 under this symmetry. So that's the way of permuting the roots. And um, let's look at um, then the discriminant we have. So what do we have? Um, our roots, the polynomial, Say so let's call it now, instead of x1, let's call it just c. Our roots will be c, and then tau of c, and then tau square of c. So this is our roots in the splitting field. And then uh, the discriminant computed in the splitting field will be the square of the product of all differences uh, of those. So it will be c without tc, tau c, sorry, c without tau squared of c, and then the difference of tau c and tau squared of c. So let's look at this expression. Uh, using algebra we can rewrite it in a better way. Um, so we can just write it as a result of um, conjugating this uh, with tau and with tau squared and then taking the product. Up to a sign it will be just this. So let me do my trickery here. I could think of this as tau cubed applied to c and then factor out tau squared. So it will be tau squared all of tau of c without c. And then uh, here I will just uh, take tau out of the expression. So what is left is tau minus tau of c. Everywhere and in between I'm taking the products. So all these three factors are c minus tau c up to a sign with some, uh, some, some power of tau applied to. I can write it even uh, neater now. I can write it as c minus tau of c. Then I could take this term tau of c minus tau of c. And then I could take this term with minus sign, so it will be tau squared of c minus tau of c. Uh, overall minus sign will have to be compensating for that. So now we have an element in our splitting field F. So it's over F. And I have the same element, and I have the same element again, and I'm applying all my symmetries. So identity tau, tau squared. We saw before that that is going to give us an element which is fixed under the symmetry group. So it has to be 
an element in the base field K. So that is an element which I will call RU and it belongs to the base field K. And uh, the discriminant I have is the, the square of this. So the discriminant is um, the square of U. Again in K. So what it says now is that um, um, if I have the symmetry group, I can be sure that the discriminant will have to be a, a square. So the discriminant is really without square. The discriminant is a square of u, uh, and that's it. So the discriminant is a square in in uh, my ba base field. It's not zero, of course, and it is a square. I'm putting it as a characterization because it's going to be a characterization. So it's going to be true that uh, if if uh, the discriminant is not a square, then I'll have to have the largest possible Galois group, the whole symmetry group. So let's go the other way around. Let's assume that uh, the discriminant, so con conversely, let's assume that the discriminant is a square. And then argue that our splitting algebra has to be dark sum of two fields has to be direct sum and that will leave us with only this possibility. So um, what do we have? In the splitting algebra the discriminant is the square of, 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 of this term. So let me call just the product of differences of my universal roots. Let me call it uh, this partial D. So then I have uh, the condition that this squared is equal to some square in the base field. Then, um, since my splitting algebra is commutative, I can be sure that this times this is equal to zero in my splitting algebra. That is just putting on, uh, on one side and factoring um, as a difference of squares. You can do it in a commutative algebra. And that means that um, I have non-trivial zero divisors. And that means that I should not be in the field. That means that I should be in this case. So um, we concluded it the other way. We assume that the discriminant of the polynomial is a square in, in, in the field of coefficients and we saw that the algebraic structure should be such that it will allow it, it should allow for zero devices. So we have a complete characterization now. We can complete this answer that it is if and only if the discriminant is a square we have the uh, abelian Galois group A3 and if uh, it is not a square, we have the full non abelian Galois group S3. So that is the main result of the computation, the characterization of the splitting algebra and really of the splitting field. A splitting field is of degree 3 if the discriminant is a square, and a splitting field is of degree 6 if the discriminant is not a square. Um, more examples are to come.